We are live. 3D Avengers 4 Avengers Endgame Thoughts Film. I guess this is part 5 by now. See, if I was the conspiratorial sort, I would start to think that the universe is against me finishing this review. Or series. Anyway. This has a ton of spoilers for the movie, so if you haven't already watched it, this... Yeah. Okay, here we go. Notes taken before watching. Right, so I was talking about the... Yeah, we see them in the white uniform, the trailer. Steve, Nebula, Ant-Man, Barton, Rhodey, and Tony, Natasha. Now having watched the movie, they kept hitting Let Himself Go Thor and Professor Hulk even though they walk there in the film. That was an excellent decision. We should not know about those two things going in. And if you kept watching without, you know, ha having not watched the movie, there you go. You were just spoiled on something that really, you should not know that before, you know. Anyway. And yeah, further I noted, now that I've rewatched Ant-Man and the Wasp, I see how much the how much the white uniform looks like the uniform that Hank Pym used in that movie to enter the quantum realm, so it probably is related to that uniform and supposed to be for the time travel and or alternate universe travel. And there's the great bit where you know Thor calls his hammer. I like this one. I I like how that's basically the first thing we see him do in the movie. You know, he's he's sitting there really down about having lost, and Captain Marvel comes up, and she's like, let's let's do this, what are, we waiting? what are we waiting for? And he just, he gets up, he walks over there, and, you know, calls the Stormbreaker, and you see a little bit of wind, you know, move, move her hair, and she just does that wry smile, that's a great moment, great moment in the trailer, great moment in the movie. Now... Nerdist, yeah, is Avengers Endgame setting up the Young Avengers? Nerdist News with Jessica Chobot. They talk about if the Avengers jump far ahead in time, Cassie Lang might be Stature, and Monica Rambeau might be Photon or Captain Marvel. They, I mean, there's room for Cassie to become the, the, yeah, now that, you know, we've gone five years ahead in time, she's a teenager, some superheroes start as teenagers, you know, relatively few of them start as children, but yeah. So, so there's definitely room for for that, and yeah, we don't see the the Rambo either of the Rambos in in this. Neither neither First Blood Part One or Part Two. That was a terrible joke. The the yeah Monica Rambo and I'm sorry I've forgotten her her mother's name. It's you know. It's been a few months since I watched that movie. Now, <clears throat> and certainly, you know, the, the, I forget, they, they probably do talk about that in the nurse video as well, I just didn't make them a note of it, but yeah, that, you know, Hawkeye's daughter, now a teenager, and clearly good with, you know, bow and arrow, could become the next Hawkeye. Now, let's see. I mean, this this really is, you know, Hawkeye, you, Barton, it, it genuinely does seem to have, you know, what, what's it called, retired, you know, bought the farm for the third movie in a row that, that he appears in. You know, he did that at the end of Age of Ultron, he did it, you know after the events of Civil War, technically, but still, you know, at the end of the... He was retired at the start of that movie, and he retires after the events at the end of the movie. You know, Infinity War, he doesn't appear, we're just told he retired, and then in this one, he retires again. Even though retirement clearly doesn't agree with him, as, as Tony pointed out. Played 18, shot 18, just can't seem to miss. And... let's see... yes, and... Nerdist News just but new excuse me, new endgame posters confirm who was who dusted in Infinity War. And let's see, make sure it's sure it's dusted. Here's what I noted. The posters all say Avenge the Fallen. This really is the first time that the Avengers have something to avenge, isn't it? Which is a great, you know, 
at the end of the first one is that you know if you can't protect the earth you can be damn sure we'll avenge it and yeah they couldn't protect half the universe so now they avenge it now let's see and they talk about how the let's see the pepper pots might become rescue i'm really glad you did they ever actually refer to her as rescue i'm not sure they did they just and and i like how the you know you know morgan comes in and she's got the the helmet or was she wearing that i forget and and tony's like where'd you find that helmet I'm in the garage mm. i i like being in the garage too you know that that's a gift for your mother but it's okay your mother never wears anything I give her anyway, and just, yeah. And it's it's such a great, because of course, you know, yeah, eventually he would get around to building a suit of armor for hers, to protect her. And I do still really, really love that about Iron Man 3, that just right off the, you know, the, 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 the Malibu, you know, his, his house is, is destroyed with the, you know, by the, by the rockets from the helicopter, you know, immediately, without hesitation, he protects her. He is in as much danger as she is, but he protects her. That's, yeah. And let's see, then, then there's Avengers Endgame, Avenge the Fallen featurette trailer. And, yeah, ultimately, you know, just, you should, you should watch it. It's a good video. And, yeah, I'm just, I'm not gonna, there's a lot of good, yeah, I'm just gonna give the titles to the videos that I don't really have comments on. There's a video called How Avengers Endgame Should End, great video. Let's see. Right, yeah, I do have a few comments for that one. Captain America dying to defeat Thanos and saving half of all life seems pretty on brand, they say, and I would add, there's been build-up to Steve sacrificing himself in most of the movies which he appear in. All three of his solo movies seem as though he's going to, you know, he's going to sacrifice himself at the end. In the first Avengers movie, he doesn't self-sacrifice, but in the second one he says they shouldn't leave the city if they can't get all the civilians out alive. So, you know, that's not only himself, but, you know. And Infinity War, he tries to stop Thanos with his bare hands, which is a good way to get dead. And let's see. There's a video called, Does the New Endgame Trailer Confirm the Time Travel Theory? Again, I recommend you watch it. Top 10 Most Powerful Marvel Women. Top 10 Things to Remember Before Seeing Avengers Endgame. How Captain Marvel will rescue Iron Man in Avengers Endgame. Avengers Endgame trailer, every Easter egg and timeline revealed. Let's see. So. Yeah, and this. Uh, when they all walk wearing the white uniforms, Nebula moves back and forth in placement. This is because they don't want to show Steve and Tony standing next to each other, which is what's going to happen early in the film. And I note, since this is probably the last movie where Chris Evans plays Steve, or at least where he plays it more than a cameo, I realize his contract is up, but I'm saying there's some chance that he might agree to... I mean, if, if they call him... Like... I could understand if he doesn't want to stay in the physical shape, but if they like call him and say, "We're only gonna film your your face," and it's one of the, it's like a fun cameo, a la the the stuff in Homecoming, you know, which I acknowledge he, they wouldn't have been able to do that properly if not. I don't know. I guess they could put his face on someone else's body. I don't know if he did, he would want that. But anyway, if they call him up with something like that, just he. He might say yes, you know, but anyway. Yeah, since it probably is, presumably this will close the rift between Tony and Steve. I will be very impressed, but honestly not, probably not that surprised if they manage to make this satisfying for the viewers. The MCU has done so many things so right, right from the start. But, yeah, yeah. The, uh, I guess I shouldn't, 
give this away since it's not the MCU, it's a different franchise, but let's just say that I don't think the DCU had a satisfying closing of the rift. And yeah, I mean, I've already talked in one of the pr earlier parts of this video that how, how I feel about it. So I'm just going to go through the rest of my notes on it. Basically, by the end of Civil War, Tony looks at Bucky Barnes and sees the man who murdered his parents. Whereas Steve looks at him and sees his best friend since childhood and someone worth saving. And that he believed he could save. You know, ever since seeing him in the second solo movie, and yeah, I know early in the film they would probably work together out of necessity. Tony won't have forgiven Steve yet. Near the end, Steve's about to sacrifice himself. Tony will say that he shouldn't, and maybe Steve will say something to the effect of, I owe you, I owe you that for signing with Bucky. Tony forgives Steve, and Steve will sacrifice himself, saving the day. And yeah, that's not how it ended up playing out. I guess that might have been too corny, but yeah. Again, I've I've said what I, I want to... Let's see... There's a video called Captain Marvel Full Mo Movie Breakdown, Easter eggs and details you missed. Great video. Top 10 times the MCU foreshadowed future events. Top 10 worst things Captain Marvel has ever done. Why everyone is wrong about Avengers Endgame. I would say that's a very that that titling is a lot like Twin Perfect, but they didn't invent that, did they? It's just they they just like to screw with people. I I so last time I, I I yeah I didn't get around to watching it, but I was gonna watch the video that they used to title Fridge Logic, Fridge Logic. You know what? One one second. I think I can get the exact title. Instead of guessing, yeah, Fridge Logic, Superman is a Moron, parts one and two, and those are now called Why You're Wrong About Superman, which, I mean, I, yeah, I guess the, the video will upset people who are like, there's nothing wrong with the, you know, the Donner Superman movie, but, or, you know, move, move, one and a half. Donner Superman movie since technically his was changed. Anyway, the second one. Right, and let's see. Yeah, the, everyone is wrong. Up is up is down. Sort of, yeah, I don't remember the lyrics. The rest of that way. Yeah, the the. Let's see. Instead of being able to undo the snap, the heroes will travel into one or more alternate dimensions, which is in the quantum realm. This is how they will introduce X-Men and the Fantastic Four, even though we haven't seen them in the MCU so far, because Marvel Studios only just got the rights to those characters. And I would add, I think that makes a lot of sense, and I think that, let's see, undoing the snap has the potential to be too much of a deus ex machina, unsatisfying, and, again, potential. Now, having watched the film, I mean, if I'm going to be completely, totally, brutally honest, no, it's, it's earned. They have to fight so hard to get the... the no, I've, I think they made it work. Although I could understand if some might say it, it is too much of a deus ex machina and, and unsatisfying, but the... What was the other thing I was going to say about that? The, the, let's see. Hmm. Right, yeah, so in, in the film, it is not alternate, you know, it's, it, they travel through time, but never to an alternate dimension. So, really, it is, the, the, let me think. That, yeah, that does, it is now, it's now not clear how they're going to introduce those. And it's possible that one of the next movies will have alternate dimensions. The Doctor Strange, see, the, as far as I understand, there's at least one more Doctor Strange movie coming up. That, it would make a lot of sense for that one to, 
you know, we don't see a lot of, we, we see glimpses of other dimensions in the first one, but the, you know, the, the big thing in that one is more, you know, for one thing, it's the first movie, so it introduces all these concepts, but it's more maybe the time manipulation. You know, Stephen wins via, sorry, Doctor Strange wins via time manipulation. That's, you know, they, they didn't, it, it would have been a, a bit excessive if there was time manipulation and then several different alternate realities. You know, we, we really only have, yeah, we, we have dimensions that exist, you know, at the same time as, as Earth, but that Earth are protected from, you know, and, and really the only one we, we learn a lot about, excuse me, the only one we see is Dormammu's dimension. And, yeah, and, and Doctor Strange fixes it with time manipulation, with the time loop. So, yeah, for in, in this, that it's only time travel, only, that it's, it's time travel and, and space travel, and, and so that, that, you know, these are the things that, that solve the problem. I, th I think it's a good idea to, to introduce, like, one of, and really, there hasn't been time travel in the MCU before. The, uh, the the and Doctor Strange really it rewinds time and then there's the time loop. There's not really any, and and in Infinity War he watched you know fourteen million different futures, different possible futures. Unless I'm completely misremembering something, no, there's no time travel in any of the other. You know, this is the first MCU movie to have time travel, and I think they use it really well. It, you know, it really has the potential to, to be a cop-out and really just, like, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, relatively little happens when they, you know, they travel through time, and mostly we, we see, you know, we see what happened just before or after certain events in those movies. But not a lot of consequence ultimately happens there. It's just that they they find ways to get their hands on the stones, you know. And then Thanos gets through with you know his his daughters. But that's that's the the that's the extent of it. Ultimately, the the time travel is more to to kind of. You know, it's it's like sitting down with a photo album and just like, oh, I remember that. Ah, oh, that was amazing, you know. And, yeah. I, I, I love the way they, they did it. And the, let's see. Yes. So, what was I? Where was I? I was... Yeah, I think I said everything about that now. That was the, the, that was that, right. I brought up in an earlier part of this video, if Scott can leave the, the, you know, can, can have experienced five years as five hours, then why did Janet age? But Janet said, Watch out for the time vortexes. We can't pull you out of those. Maybe he went into a time vortex. Maybe, you know, by accident, maybe he couldn't avoid it or something. Maybe he figured that it was worth a shot or something. And that's why he was able to... They, they don't really say that that isn't the case. So, it, yeah. Avengers Endgame trailer breakdown, Super Bowl spot, Easter eggs you missed. And again, there's a bunch of stuff. I don't really have any new notes for it. How each Avenger got to Endgame? Did I already... I didn't accidentally go back, I don't think. And then there's Avengers Endgame trailer 3. Let's see. Hmm. Endgame theories revealed in Avengers special look. 
or just news, just get Chobot, and I guess. See, I, I do like the, the thing with, yeah, they, they suggest that, you know, in, in New York, tw you know, do you trust me? That's 2019 Tony talking to 2012 Steve, recruiting him, which is, is a good theory. And yeah, I, I, I like, I, I... I prefer, ultimately, prefer the way they did it in the movie, that basically there's not a lot... I mean, yeah, there's, you know, Frigga talks to Thor, and Howard talks to Tony, and those are very positive. And then you have the, the great character exploration of Nebula facing another Nebula, and the, the you know, 2022 Nebula convincing Gamora to go, you know, I mean, she was always just waiting for, you know, if she thought she could get away from Thanos, she would, you know, but the, the, let's see, there's a, yeah, you know, the, so there's those, and then, you know, Cap fights his own self from, from further back, and, um, let's see. And, and, you know, 2022 Cap tricks some of the, let's see, yeah, you know, by saying Hail Hydra, he gets the, the scepter from them. Let's see. Let's see. You know, I, I could understand, you could maybe argue that them buying it just because he says Hell Hydra, you know, why don't they call the, what was it, the, the minister, the secretary, something to confirm first. But basically they realized that Captain America is going to have a much easier time getting, you know, every single time these guys are going to have to get, you know, everyone's going to be like, why is that, you know, why, where are you taking that and why? And they're going to have to say, look, we, you know, take it up with the secretary. We, go, you know, but if Captain America is doing something, it's the right thing to do, obviously. So, you know, they're like, ah, oh, great, we got, we got him. You know, we, we don't have to fight him now because we did get the. Then there's the Avengers Endgame Thanos one TV spot trailer unreleased. Um... Oh yeah, I ended up not watching. Unreleased footage reveals the Avengers plan for Thanos. I didn't want to know that before, and I haven't watched it yet. I, yeah, I'm. I will probably watch it, but I don't. I I'm probably not gonna record a video right after a, yeah. And let's see. I also haven't yet read reviews. I just you know checked now now. Yeah, it's possible I'll, I'll look. Currently, I'm on page 13 of 42 of my own notes. I'll see if I want to look at reviews after doing that. You know what? I'll just very, very brief. Man, this computer. Okay. Right. The, the, yeah. It's 214 reviews, and only eight of them are rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. So it's certified fresh at 96%. And let's see why Rocket and Nebula are crucial to defeating Thanos in Avengers Endgame. There's news edition. Whoops, Daisy. There we go. That should be. And yeah, there's a bunch of. And then there's Avengers Endgame final battle against Thanos. They put out a ton of these things in the days leading up to and there's also there's like three new ones which I haven't again I haven't watched them I probably will but anyway the let's see yeah the the you know in that video Scarlett Johansson out of character says these are the highest stakes that the Avengers have ever faced now technically ego was threatened the entire universe not only half of it but that was the Guardians of the Galaxy not the Avengers 
So, you know, you could say that Rocket and Nebula fought against a, an even more... Yeah, you know, and, and you could say that with, with that, it would take longer. Because you only put one plant on each planet, right? So it would take a while. We see it move very fast. But some of those planets are big. Yeah, I mean, and anyone not currently on a planet wouldn't die. Any, anyone currently in a spaceship or in orbit or the like wouldn't. Did Ego not think of that, I guess? Yeah, maybe he has a slightly limited perspective on because it it can only be on like soil which also limits it actually doesn't it if if like i mean he couldn't put it on like a volcano planet or something you know so which which doesn't necessarily mean that there's no life on the, anyway and let's see yeah chris evans says every time you think marvel's pulled every single trick out of the bag and then, you know, we briefly see clips from the climaxes of the first three Avengers films, and I have to agree with that. The first three, I was definitely surprised by at least one major element of the climax in each. I did not... The, the trailers for the first movie did not at all prepare me for, like, I mean, I, I loved the movie from start to finish, but it was, like, at, at this level of, like how big the action is, and then the climax comes, and it goes like this, and I was like, oh my god, the, just, the, the, in the trailer, you know, Tony says, I'm bringing the party to you, and then he flies around the building, and you see the big thing, and, and you're like, wow, the Avengers are gonna take down one of those, and then you watch the movie, and they take down, like, six, it's insane, and then the second one, I did not see coming, that he was gonna float the entire, and, and, instantly kill every single living thing on earth you know he said when when the dust settles everything living on this planet will be metal just and and then in infinity war you know i mean yeah just again a lot of elements from the the yeah let, let me just briefly i didn't see coming the that you know, Wanda would would blow up Vision to to you know blow up the the gem and with and and that would also blow up Vision and I didn't see coming the, the rewinding of time and yanking it from the forehead that was interesting. There was nothing about Vision in this, was there? I don't think he was like. There's a reference obviously when Wanda's like, "You took everything from me," and he's like, "I don't even know you." You will, and she attacked. That was that was really great, and I I feel like like in the first movie, Than uh, sorry, in Infinity War is what I'm referring to. Thanos didn't really have funny lines as such. He was always like, I mean, yeah, he he wasn't always in control. Sometimes he was he was sad and upset, but he was never there was never really funny, and there was no you know he was never really embarrassed as such in a. Yeah, I, I would say so. He was never, like, outright embarrassed. And when, where in this, you know, you have... I don't even know, like, you know, he... You know, yeah, I'm sorry. It's funny. It's a funny line. The, the way they... I'm, I'm maybe over... I'm maybe exaggerating a little bit. But it's a funny line. And it's meant to be. You know, and then, you know, I am inevitable. Clink! I am Iron Man, you know, just... Is it possibly a missed opportunity? that it didn't then, you know, the, the camera pull, and like, I am grouped. I don't know, maybe, it, it, I mean, it's Tony's moment. Yeah, it's, it's, let's see. At no point do Tony and, and Tree, Vin Treasel, as they, that's, I, I reread, I, I didn't reread all of them, but the, I th was it Infinity War, was it, Guardians 2, I forget, but, you know, Vin Treasel, Dave Blutista, Zoe Saladana. I have to admit, at first I thought that was just a, a misspelling. That's one more A than is in her last name. It's, oh, like salad, like green, yeah. And the there's at least one more. What was it? 
And and Josh swollen because it, and it, it points out he looks like a big walking bruise, which I can't really argue with that. I I feel like I've I've seen people complain about his appearance, and I'm like, I don't know what they're talking about. But yeah, he does kind of look like a bruise. I can't really argue with that. Again, it doesn't take me out of it, but yeah. And yeah, to to get back to this movie, yes, again, major elements that I I I honestly thought that the the snap would happen after the climax, maybe at the end of the climax, and they wouldn't, sorry, the, the snap to undust everyone who was dusted. I didn't expect everyone to show up like there at the end. I thought it was going to be kind of like Civil War, where the, the final climax is not that big. It's kind of just a little personal. I... I think what I would was expecting was to genuinely see the the last bit, the la the very last fight be Thanos versus excuse me Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America. That that excuse me that that would be you know the three of them would get the another chance to to take him down, and that would be the the big thing. I had not at all expected. I mean, he has everyone he had in. Infinity War and even more. That's yeah. That that's wild. And I mean the let's see. I guess the reason that they didn't use what was it Rain of Fire, Fire Rain, something like that in Infinity War was that well, the it, it wouldn't have worked against the Wakanda the the shield anyway. I I could imagine. I'll I'll buy that. And, yeah, I mean, obviously part of the explanation is they wanted something in their back pocket for the huge, you know, if they didn't bring in more, you know, you also had those giant, like, maybe like g gorilla looking kind of things. Those were definitely not an infinity war. And, you know, you had all the generals on the battlefield, which, um, well, I mean, it really only Squidward was, was dead before, but anyway. And let's see. And I read that Kim Feige is well. I already knew he's a Trekkie, but I read that this theory that he may have named the movie after the episode Star Trek, the the season finale of Star Trek Voyager, which is also called Endgame. So yeah, and not spoiling anything, but that episode has. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry. I guess that is kind of a spoiler. It's. It plays around with with certain things, as far as yeah. I just I'm sorry. People who've watched that episode, you know what I'm talking about. And people who haven't, I'm not gonna spoil that episode for you. And no, I'm not gonna get into a big thing defending Voyager here. You know, if you don't like it, you don't like it. Let's see and. Right, and, and the, and, hmm. Yeah, I, get, I think, yeah, this is trivia from, eh, I guess I shouldn't, anyway. Right, yes, and I noted I've only seen Tessa Thompson in Heroes and Thor Ragnarok, and the, and the trailer for Men in Black International, but when she's confident, she's such a badass, I, I'm glad, I was really happy to see her back in this, and especially, you know, at first, I wasn't sure she was going to get more than just the, you know, brief new Asgard bit, but yeah, there she is at the end, flying horse, and, and she's got the sword and everything, and yeah, and I also can't wait to see, yeah, I can't wait to see her with Chris Hemsworth again in Men in Black International. Now... And another video, Kevin Feige reveals new details about Marvel Phase 4, Nerdist News, Disney Showbot, Avengers Endgame full cast interview conference, Avengers Endgame Avengers Assemble TV spot, trailer new, <sighs> top 10 most insane Avengers Endgame fan theories, Does new Avengers Endgame footage and toys confirm a major theory? 
What Marvel movie would the Russo brothers return to direct? The Russo brothers return to that Ant-Man Thanos theory. And yes, so some of my own notes again. In Infinity War, the strongest subplots are and character arcs are the ones most directly linked to Thanos, including his own. Gamora, his adopted daughter, and through her Star Lord, who cares deeply about her, the other adopted daughter, Nebula. Both daughters desperate to stop Thanos. Nebula also wants revenge. Tony, due to his obsession with the idea of aliens returning to Earth. First Avengers movie, does this continue that trend or does it focus most on those who lost the most? Tony lost Spider Man, Steve lost Bucky, maybe lost Gamora, Rocket lost the other Guardians of the Galaxy. He deeply cares about them, especially Groot, and it seems as though Barton lost his family. Yes, I would I would say it the the focus is on the ones who lost people that they deeply cared about. The yeah, yeah. And Avengers Endgame, Captain Marvel powers TV spot. And, and this is when, you know, Rocket says, you better not throw up on my ship. I'm pretty sure they're on the Benatar, one of Quill's ships, but of course Rocket is going to claim that it, it's his. You know, Quill isn't there to argue. Another video, top 10 most powerful Marvel women. And let's see. And there's the thing about how death, yeah, death is number one. And in the comics, Thanos killed 50% of all living beings to impress death. He wants to date her, but she does not want him, which enrages him. The comic book writers predicted what we today call the nice guy or incel. And the. Yeah, I. I was. I, I had kind of figured that maybe in this one we would see Hela and Thor would be like, I saw you die. She'd be like, death never dies. And yeah. And then we'd have, you know, and maybe she would actually be against Thanos. Like she, you know, in, in the comic. Yeah, it's like, yeah. But I am still very happy with how they handled it. The, the idea of 2014 Thanos, you know, getting to see the, you know, the, the future of 20, was it 2017, I guess, according to the official timeline, seeing that he got the, the stones and, you know, and he wants to... to do it again, but do it even, it just, that was a really cool idea, and, you know, I, I like to think that in addition, 2014 Thanos had, you know, finally fixed the, the, the router, and he logged on, and he saw that a million people were saying, why, why doesn't Thanos, you know, we saw him in 2012, why, what's he waiting for with collecting the, the stones, you know, he's in Guardians, and he just sends someone else to collect the stone. And he's in the post credit scene of Avengers Age of Ultron. And yeah, anyway. Avengers Endgame Final Battle. And yeah, that, that's one of my, that was one of the best videos, I think, that the, you know, Marvel Studios put out re recently. It lists the MCU movies up to this point with brief clips from each. It takes 43 seconds, which I I think if you watch that part of the video, like, if you watch that, like, maybe a bunch of times in a row, that's probably going to, you know, you're going to get a headache because that is a lot of information to take in. You know, the, you know what is it, 21 movies in, in 43 seconds. And, like, if you've watched the movies, it's, you know, in addition to the images you're seeing, it's going to be like, you know, oh, right, I remember this and this and this of, of the movie. Yeah. And I guess they don't have the rights to footage from The Incredible Hulk because instead they use footage from other movies with Hulk and Ross. You know, I, yeah, I, that's the only thing I can figure is, is rights issues. Because it's not like they don't show it at all, and they have the, the title, The Incredible Hulk, but it's Hulk stuff from, I think, 
I think both of the first two Avengers movies, and Ross from Civil War. So, I forget if there's also Ross from Infinity War. And it shows Ant-Man and the Wasp and Captain Marvel before Infinity War, but then those two movies did, you know, Infinity War is the very, you know, that's the one that especially leads up to this one. The other ones provide some more, you know, we, we learn more things. Yeah. And then there's Avengers Endgame IMAX featurette trailer number two. Spoiler free massive Avengers Endgame leak is ruining the film. In case you need a reminder, some people can be complete and utter a-holes. Why would you do that? What, what possible, other than just being a sadistic prick, why would you ruin the movie for other people? I, I completely avoided it. I, nothing was ruined for me, but I mean, to the people who did, I, I could totally imagine, like, if I had read, say, Thor gets one last talk with his mother, you know, Tony gets to talk to his father, and, you know, meet, meet him before he was even born. I did you know, I wouldn't want to know that before watching the movie and just, yeah. I really appreciate that Nerdist went in and, and tried to help prevent people from seeing the spoilers. Avengers Endgame Iron Man fight. And... Yeah, and I, I forget if it's this or the Summer Begins TV spot. One of them has... You know, character, I, f I forget which character. I, yeah, I guess in the, in the movie it's Captain Marvel, so it's probably, you know, say, oh, oh, they can use the Infinity Stones to bring back those that were dusted by the snap. I, I don't think they should have put that in, in one of the... But, I mean, now that I've seen it, I mean, ultimately, the... the no, no, you know what, no. I, I stand by that. I don't think you should know that before watching the movie. But, it, it, yeah, occasionally they do give away... I mean... It, it sucks, but today, action movie trailers do tend to give away too much. It's, yeah. I hope that, you know, they'll, they'll get back to being better at that. But I, I do think that the MCU tends to be better at it than other, you know, so, like, let's say the, the, uh, yeah, the trailer for the, the Amazing Spider-Man, well, at least one of the trailers, gives away some of the stuff that happens at the very end, you know, and, and yeah, it, it shows too much. It simply shows too much. And, and certainly the ones for Amazing Spider-Man 2, you know. Anyway. Let's see. I... Did the new Avengers Endgame TV spot run our Iron Man Rescue Theory? Another good video. Just one question, Avengers Endgame edition. I, I like the bit with Captain Marvel. I don't, I don't tend to watch this segment. It's it's one of the things. Yeah, I. It's just it's not really my favorite part of the the Colbert report. The wait, sorry, that's not what it's called anymore. His show, Colbert's show. Avengers Endgame, Ant Man, Iron Man two spot. Now. Right, and apropos no particular video, when we see Captain Marvel, yeah, the Cap, yeah, the post credit scene of Captain Marvel's solo movie, she demands to know where Fury is. I hope she will not take forever to trust the Avengers, that could get tedious. When the other characters who knows Fury well could prove that they are on his side with some very clear statement, and of course it also can't happen too fast and undermine the tension. And I think they did a brilliant job with the Avengers and the Guardians in Infinity War. They trust each other because both of them respect and trust Thor. Although Quill is not the biggest fan of Thor. The... Yeah, I mean, like I mentioned in an earlier part, that seems not even in this movie. It, and I mean, ultimately, yeah, we don't need to see because, yeah, the, the others, they can prove that they know Fury very easily. And, you know, it's not like Captain Marvel. She's not like some kind of... You know, she's she's not like some paranoid nutball. Although she does think that the, that you know friendly neighbor of of you know Rambo's is just a yeah she she she, she thinks that he's a scroll. 
Now, I saw a theory that said Loki didn't actually die in Infinity War, instead he disguised himself as Hulk, which is why when Banner arrives on Earth, he knows about Thanos, even though he was Hulk on the ship. It's a cool theory. And I wrote, I don't think it will turn out to be true, and it didn't. The way I see it, Banner was not Hulk the entire time he was on... that he was on the ship when Thanos was also on the ship. He started out as Banner, hiding out amongst the dead bodies on the ship. He heard everything that Thanos said, then when it came time to try to beat Thanos, he very quickly turned into Hulk, and then they have the fight that we see. We've seen him turn into the Hulk extremely fast in these movies, so I really don't see why he couldn't have, excuse me, hid out as Banner. I mean, if either the Hulk or Banner was hiding, because, you know, the, the Thanos' children were going around stabbing everyone who had survived, don't you think that Banner would have an easier time, like... If you walked around and you saw either Banner playing dead and you weren't sure if he was dead, or you saw the Hulk playing dead you weren't sure if he was dead, don't you think you'd stab the Hulk? You, you might figure Banner, ah, I mean, he's, he's dead and he's, he's just a tiny little, you know, he's a puny human. What can he do against Thanos' might? But Hulk, you're, you're going to make absolutely sure. And if they stab Hulk, he is not going to be able to keep completely quiet about it. Now, while nearly all of the X-Men movies have had heroes with clear powers fighting more than one villain with clear powers, you know, with the, ultimately with the, the MCU, it's basically about two-thirds of the movies, where with the X-Men, I mean, you could argue that X-Men 2 doesn't, but, I mean, at the end of the day... Man, I forgot when I made that note that I, I'm not supposed to spoil any other franchise. Because technically, that is the, the Fox X-Men franchise, not MCU. Never mind. I mean, it's not a major spoiler. And it is that is what you expect from X-Men. Anyway. Basically, yeah, the, the MCU movies that do have more than one, you know, villain with powers or a suit or something F you know fighting against the the heroes iron man two and three thor yeah all four avengers movies civil war arguably although those are heroes both guardians of the galaxy movies doctor strange thor ragnarok black panther ant-man and the wasp and the remaining eight do not so, more videos. Avengers Endgame, Thanos attacks Iron Man, TV spot. And, yeah, there's the part where Barton says, under different circumstances, this would be totally awesome. To the audience, it is totally awesome. Even though we don't want, you know, we don't know it from that video, but, I mean, he's talking about that either... Well, no, he doesn't know at that point, but either he or Black Widow are going to have to... Now, I like, you know, Rhodey lands in front of Ant-Man, he's shocked. What's up, regular-sized man? I really quite like, yeah, I mean, he's, he's probably at least a little, I mean, he's probably not, like, super pissed still, but he's enjoying being able to, to give, you know, give a little jolt to, to, yeah, and, and, and like, Ant-Man completely dropped, you know, most of his food is gone because of the... And, and then Professor Hulk w walks up and he gives him the some food. And, and didn't he say in the in the other scene that he makes it himself, too? And the, yeah, anyway. The, the... Let's see. The, the... Right. What was I... Yeah, the, the you know, Nebula like, lands the ship, and, and, you know, she sees Ant-Man there, and she walks past. Rhodey, be advised, there's an idiot in the landing, it's, you know, what's it, landing zone, well, some, something like that. And, yeah, quite enjoy that. But, but, yeah, I mean, Rhodey, you know, the, the, in, in Civil War, you know, yeah, I'm just gonna go, giant man through, like, what was it, a truck or something? I forget exactly what. 
at Rhodey, and he managed to, to shoot all of it, you know, with, with the guns. And he, let's see, was he also, yeah, and, and didn't, didn't he also grab Rhodey and, like, throw him at a plane and Spider-Man prevented him from hitting the plane? Because that would have hurt even in, in the suit. And, let's see, I think there might have been one more thing that, that he did, but I forget. But Rhodey did get to punch Giant Man out with, with Tony. Avengers Endgame, Thanos is Captain America. Avengers Endgame, full cast interview. Let's see. Right, yeah, I forget, I didn't note which one, but in one of these trailers or TV spots, Captain Marvel flies, and is, is it called whoops? Like, she goes, whoa! I'm not sure she would whoop in her solo movie, but... Maybe she's gotten to a place where she enjoys her powers more. It has been a while since we last saw her, but I mean that bit. I forget if that shot is. Yeah, th that shot is probably from when she does. You know, she she sees if there's anything on the planet other than Thanos, but she doesn't whoop in in the movie. So I guess just the marketing people added it because they thought that the the shot needed some kind of audio. You know. I mean, the when we see her there at the end, and she's coy with Spider-Man, I, I could see that, you know, version of her go woo, but, you know, other than that, but yeah, that's also, you know, she, she returned, she, I mean, she might have seen that everybody got undusted from one of the other planets she was on, and then immediately flew back towards Earth, so, yeah. And the, let's see, was there something else I wanted to say about that? If there is, I can't remember it right now. Let's see. Right, and another video is, Thanos was wrong. Eugenics and overpopulation, Renegade Cut. Excellent video. You know, I've said it before, but it bears repeating. Renegade Cut makes excellent videos. He does now, he did years ago, like his videos have changed over the years, but yeah. And I'm just I'm just briefly gonna quote. There's there's one thing Renegade Cut say. Again, watch the video yourself. It's it's a great video. Yes, the quote is Remember Malthus, that great big piece of and S word, I yeah. As that made me laugh. That was, that was a great, yeah. I mean, you sometimes you just gotta be blunt. If Emily thinks so too. Now, yes, and I noted, I wonder if Endgame will address, basically he points out that it's not the fact that, you know, the idea that, it, I mean, he, he uses stats from, from Earth, because that's what we have, you know, we don't know about the rest of the, of the universe. But he points out that if we were just willing to live in more, you know, there are places where people have a lot of space to themselves. If they were willing to give up just a little bit of that space, you know, overpopulation would not be. And the, the food production and all this, you know, he, he makes... Excellent arguments in the video. Watch the video. Yeah, this movie did not go into that. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, there, there, there are other MCU movies that have where where the good guy or the bad guy has some idea that is, you know, where if you if you actually stop and think, it doesn't in real life work like that, and yeah. Now, the following is from my notes on The Predator, and I, yeah, the, I didn't use them when I did the video on The Predator because it spoiled aliens, but yeah, they're, I've, I've put them, I'll, I'll probably, excuse me, I'll probably, some of the notes, the ones that are for aliens are now in a place where I can find them when I do another video on aliens, which 
don't hold your breath. You'll turn, like, mystique level blue before I get to it. It'll be a while, but, yeah. Now, based on number three, I would say that Shane Black, like James Cameron, sees children as people who can contribute rather than just the, you know, negative, you know, stereotypes. You know, at first, Tony does not have very much patience for, for Harley in Iron Man 3. But Tony does realize Harley can help. You know, provided Tony doesn't ask him to do something that he can't do. Tony could have chosen to leave that garage and try to hide somewhere else. And Harley does actually help out a ton. I, I, if they make, you know, the, it, yeah, there's, there's really, at the end of the day, there's no one in this movie that's confirmed as the new Iron Man, the way that Sam is confirmed as the new Captain America. But they could definitely, like, Morgan could be the next Iron Man because, again, you know, there, there are people who are like, oh, there would be Iron Woman. Are you seriously going to... Look, man can mean human being as well. So Iron Man isn't necessarily gendered. And just... Wow. Seriously, like... Anyway. Just, just some, some people obsess over really pointless things. I should know I'm one of them. But not that particular, my, you know, pointless thing. Anyway, the, the, it, could be, it could be Pepper in the rescue suit. Obviously, if it was Morgan, it wouldn't be, you know, it would be a few years down the line. It could be Harley. You know, he, he could start, like, right away. If the, I mean, the, the, yeah, I mean, he would have had to learn a lot in, in the years since when I saw him, but yeah, that would, now, let's see, but, but yeah, Harley helps out a ton. He literally saves the hero's life by throwing a snowball accurately and at the right time. You know, if, if, if you haven't watched Iron Man 3 recently, at, you know, not long after Tony gets away from the, the, female, excuse me, I'm sorry, I don't remember her name, the, the woman who asks for the file, you know, the, yeah, Tony runs out, and then, you know, Seven, the, the guy, he's, he's almost like chewing bubblegum, he, you know, leaves the car, like, slam, you know, yeah, slams the door, and he's like, and, you know, doing, doing a little, you know, he's got something in his hand, so he just does the, this little wave, and it's like a cup of coffee, so he throws away the coffee and gets rid of the cup. Yeah, I think throws away the coffee and then gets rid of the, 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 the cup itself. And then he, you know, yeah. And he, he gets out a gun and he shoots. And right at the moment that he shoots, he gets like a snowball in his head. And, and it's like, what? And then we see that, that Harley is like hiding behind a, yeah. Harley literally saved the hero's life by throwing a snowball accurately at the right time. The hero known as the invincible Iron Man, who spent the first two movies not facing all that much danger, or, or only in very specific situations. You know, if not for Harley's guy in the chair efforts, Tony would not have been able to save anywhere near as many people as he did, although he might have eventually gotten to the bad guy's help without Harley, the bad guy, without Harley's help. And when I, yeah, so when I was writing these notes for The Predator 3, the, the Predator, I mean, eventually we'll get a Predator 3, right? A movie called, a movie with three in the title and, and Predator in the title. I didn't sleep enough last night. I don't know if it shows or, or sounds. Is there a word for that? Like, if, if it's something that you can see it shows. If it's something you can hear, is it sounds or... I don't know. Then I looked up Harley and saw him, you know, credited, excuse me, as being in this. And, you know, then I noted, I'm pretty sure Hawkeye and Ant-Man were... Let's see. Were, were listed as being in 
Infinity War. And I know it will most likely be a very small role, but cool. I really enjoyed his character. And in some ways, Iron Man 3 is my favorite MCU movie, and maybe I'll do a video on why one day, even though I've done... There are people who would say I've done too many videos on MCU movies. Those people are wrong. And, uh, yeah, there's a video called Fantastic Voyage, Nerdist Remix. Very funny. I definitely watch that. Let's see... And there's a video called Avengers Endgame First Reactions Epic, with a bunch of tweets. Also a great video. Wow, I actually made it past. See, this is, this is, let's see, one, two, three. This is the fourth time that I've tried to do that one section. Finally, I actually got past the one section. So, we're going to move on to Rewatched for Research. Yes, that's what we're going to do. And yes, so I have watched every single MCU movie. And except for Captain Marvel, since I rarely watch anything in theaters more than once, and it's so recent, so no library copy, at least twice each. And almost all of them more than that, some way, way, way more. And at least once within the three months leading up to this. And... Let's see, yeah, between the 18th of February and the 12th of this month, I forget what it's called. The month's almost over, so it's almost a waste of time to adjust myself to saying, oh, this month is, you know, anyway. And, let's see, yeah, and on the Incredible Hulk, there at the end, one way they could have gone was have him turn into Professor Hulk. And maybe that's something that Norton wanted, but, you know, it was too early in the MCU for that to be the case. And, you know, it's, it's good that you could also read it as that Banner got to a point where he could control the Hulk, aim the Hulk, which is the case in, you know, Avengers, which was the one to, the next movie to have the Hulk even though it came out a full four years later. But then, you know, other than Iron Man, none of them got a sequel that close. Anyway, and yeah, we got two Avengers movies where Hulk is at least some of the time completely out of control. And the first one, most of the movie, he appears to be out of Banner's control. Basically, like, Banner tries to keep himself from Hulk getting out. Because he, you know, it's, yeah, I've, I'm moving on. And notes from rewatching Thor at the end when Thor gets his powers back, Jane briefly says, "Oh, my God," and I'm like, "Well, one quick switch of your religion, and you will be." Does the fact that when when the the Thor Thor chose t to talk to his mother instead of Natalie Portman, didn't he? Sorry, Jane. Or or wait, was the agreement that Rocket? I mean, Rocket is better at sneaking. I guess yeah. And and Thor was there to keep an eye out or something. I forget. Otherwise, I mean, that's a little... It's maybe harsh, but then that's also the last time he'll be able to talk to his mother. So, yeah. Yeah, to be fair, you know. He can, he can talk to, to Jane, you know. If, you know, the fact that they've broken up doesn't mean that it's impossible for... If he absolutely has to get a message to her. Anyway... And the, the, there's that early part where he's like, oh, this was, you know, this was my girlfriend. We see a picture. Was that like a picture they took of her for one of the other movies? Or did they take that picture for this particular movie? Because, you know, they do have, yeah. Anyway. 
and Avengers 1 rewatch notes near the very end of the climax, we see that although he gets there, unlike Thor, Loki does not get to enough fast. And Civil War rewatch notes, Steve mentions being from Brooklyn in all three of his solo movies. Seriously, go back and check. And then in Civil War, he asks Spider-Man where he's from, and he responds, Queens. Were they building up to that in all three movies? They couldn't possibly have known that Spider-Man would be back in the MCU before they were done making Civil War, back when they wrote and directed the first one in 2011. Unless Kevin Feige cast some dark magic to make sure that would happen, in which case I applaud him. The, the, excuse me, just briefly, I like that, uh, excuse me, in this one he calls him Queens. Uh, you know, yeah, that was a, a good little, and the, let's see, I was, uh, what was the other thing? But yeah, you know, it's the, the fact that Cap is from Brooklyn is probably, I haven't read as many Captain America comics as, you know, so maybe it is a major thing that he is from Brooklyn, I don't know. And Renegade Cut points out in his analysis of Civil War, there are problems with the arguments made on both sides, for and against the Accords. I was wondering if this movie would acknowledge those problems, and if that may be part of how the Avengers become a complete team again. And again, no, and I mean, and, and again, it's not, he doesn't hate the movie, you know, it's not, you know, so, some... Some movies he criticizes without hating them, but then there are movies he ha clearly hates that he, he criticizes. I also recently watched his video. I think he made one of the fun, most fun videos, Taking Apart Suicide Squad, which is still a movie I enjoy. I said from the start, I enjoyed this movie, but there are definitely problems with it. But he, he points out about the misogyny in the, the humor when, you know, there's, there's a lot of threats or mentions of violence against women and yeah it's supposed to be funny but yeah he he points out some of the best but then you know I guess overall I would have to say it's tied with being the best with as being yeah with the one that Dan Olson from Folding Ideas made so Infinity War Rewatch. Oh, right. Yeah, just briefly, I want to say, ultimately, when you have really complex ideas, a lot of the time you can't really expect big Hollywood movies to, at the end of the day, I love them, but they are Hollywood movies. I've said for, for 20 years, it doesn't have to be a bad thing that something is a Hollywood movie, a blockbuster, because there are people who are good at making them, you know. The, you know, James Cameron makes great, you know, blockbusters, and the MCU makes great blockbusters. The, the, yeah, you know, you can't necessarily expect them to have a very clear, like, the, 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 the complex idea that they'll get everything right about it, which doesn't mean that they, that it's not still well worth, you know, including the idea, and definitely, I mean, I'm, I'm with Lindsay Ellis, definitely the movie Civil War did a better job of giving Cap and, and Tony something, you know, giving them concrete arguments for their side than the comic, and I did, I, I didn't hate it when I first read it, I think I enjoyed it the first time I read Civil War, but... Yeah, when you, when you really, yeah. Yeah, so, Infinity War rewatch notes. Yeah, Scarlet, Scarlet Witch tells Vision at the start, you gave Stark your word. And, and uh, yeah, this movie, she also doesn't have the accent, does she? I, I do think it would have been good to just have a single line of just someone saying, you've gotten really good at... You know, your, your English is completely perfect now, or something, because, I mean, if she practices, maybe she can, anyway. She says, you know, you gave Stark your word, and he responds, I'd rather give it to you, my word, too. On the way to the forge, 
teenage Groot actually goes, are we there yet? You know, I mean, he says, I am Groot, but Thor responds, you'll know when we are close. And I wonder if in Endgame someone will point out for, point out to Thor that Rocket is not a rabbit. I, I think Film Brain was the one who said that that didn't keep being funny. I just don't think it was supposed to keep being funny. I agree that it wasn't funny more than one time. I think it was just supposed to be that's what he calls him, you know. It, it's funny the first time because he does, yeah, you know, he... But it, it's, no, it's not funny every single time, you know. Let's see. Right, and, and Nebula, you know, right after the snap, Nebula says, he did it, the absolute madman. Basically, everyone that Tony works with in the movie are people who don't just take his orders. Like, Spider-Man, he's not, he does want to, to please Stark, you know, but... And, you know, Doctor Strange, he'll verbal, he'll merely verbally fight back when called for. But the Guardians of the Galaxy, like, all of them are openly disrespectful towards him, which is not something he is used to. Like, when he was in a cave and they were threatening to kill him, they still did. Like, like he was like, look, over here, I need the thing. And you see them carry the thing over there. Like, they're, you know... He's used to people doing what he tells them. He's he's used to getting his way. And him not that was that was a really great like Civil War and Infinity War and, and this. It really shows the sides of him that we didn't that we hadn't seen before. I really appreciate it. And Thanos realizes the first time he seems to get his hands on the time stone that it's a fake. And Ant-Man the Wasp rewatch notes. In the mid credit scenes, Janet Van Dyne warns Scott Lang, don't go into either uh, of the time vortex as we won't be able to save you. And I noted, so I guess the time vor vortex is vortices, I don't know, might be how they do time trial in this movie. And they really don't, do they say specifically if it has to do, I don't think they mention, I don't think they would say the word time vortex in this entire movie. So as, as you, like, they have a lot of like continuity between movies, but if you just sit down and watch, like a lot of times, a thing will seem to be one way, and then in in the the movie that it's set up, and then the movie that it's paid off on, it goes a completely different way. You know, Thor one, it ends with like Loki looks like he's going to be completely lost. He does, he may not die from entering the the black hole there at the end, but you don't expect to see him back. And then in the post credit scene, there he is, you know, although not in, in full, yeah. And, you know, the, the post credit scene of Captain America 2 shows, like, or is it the mid credits? Well, one of the two shows, like, the, the two twins using their powers, but they're, like, stuck in these little cages. And Quicksilver doesn't seem like he's in control of his super speed. He seems like... You know, and, and you've got Strucker there, so you expect the you expect Quicksilver not to be in control of his super speed. You expect Strucker to be a major player. And before you say, ah, well, that scene isn't, you know, right before Age of Ultron. In the scene, Strucker specifically references that Shield and Hydra have now both fallen. That's hap that is that happens in Captain America two, so. Not that much time could have passed between it and Age of Ultron, as as far as I know, at least is yeah. Now let's see. Okay, you know what? Technically, that one I'll I'll give you that one, but the the Thor one really doesn't seem to. Anyway, right. So the let's see. Hmm. IMDb, Wikipedia, and critic sites. Okay, so... There we go. Okay, page one... Sorry, 
age 21 of 42. And um, down to, um, I'm doing the, the scan now so I don't just sit forever and stuck trying to find... Yeah, you know, the, the trivia point about that Mark Ruffalo announced that he's finished playing the Hulk after the film. This is where I wish that, like, IMDb had, like, you know, reference links. I'm pretty sure they don't. Like how Wikipedia does. Or, at the very least, that I would think of looking something like that up elsewhere so I could read why. And if it's like, is he unhappy? about the the playing the role and I don't know and <laughs> yeah Evangeline Lilly said that this film heavily reminded her of her career playing Kate Austin Lost especially the show's fourth season which employs flash forwards as a central plot device which I notice an interesting comparison and let's see And yes, this movie concludes the story arc of, you know, Bruce Banner slash Hulk that was established in Thor Ragnarok and Avengers Infinity War, which I added is excellent. Which, yeah, actually, that is the thing. At the end of Infinity War, Banner cannot call forth Hulk. And, like, he's like, ah, fine, you know, you know I'll, I'll solve it without you. And then in this, it's like, he's, yeah, like he says when we first see him, he stopped thinking of him as a, crap, as a disease to, to cure, to be cured. And yeah, yeah, I mean, that's in, in Ragnarok, Hulk was at the wheel for two whole years. Because he's tired of not, and, and then, yeah, and you have both of them in the, yeah, in, in, in Professor Hulk, in this one. Or is it just the Professor? And anyway, now that I think about it, I, I already talked about how I was, I was happy to see that, you know, in, in Avengers 1, he was, like, really... He, he would always avoid, like, soldiers and, and shield personnel and such, just out of habit. Even though he knew that they weren't on, you know, on the shield helicarrier, they're not there to take him in. He's, he's supposed to be there, you know. But he's still, and now he's, like, so happy to be a role model. But maybe that's part of the Hulk persona, because in Ragnarok, the Hulk persona is, like, super happy to be cheered on by the crowds as a gladiator. So, yeah, I guess that is... One of those traits. Yeah, and, and then when Banner tries to convince them to do a selfie with Ant-Man, that's more of a Banner thing, I would say, because Banner's always... Yeah, anyway. And... Let's see... Right, yeah, the... the it's, yeah. It's, yeah, hear the, the thing about... I need to stop repeating myself. I really need to stop repeating myself. Yeah, this thing says, you know, Clint Barton has a new outfit in this film, visually similar to that of Ronan from the comics. And then I copy-pasted from Wikipedia on the comics character. In his role as Ronan, Barton shows great proficiency with the katana and other melee weapons. I, I really... That was, that was awesome. And I, I mean, I would watch an entire movie that's just Jeremy Renner playing the the Ronin persona of Clint Barton, you know. But yeah, I really love the the scene they did. Yeah, and I I don't think I mentioned in the other video, but I saw in the other and uh, somewhere that that it, he takes on that persona in the aftermath of Civil War. So it does make it similar to how in Infinity War, Tony gives Spider Man the Iron Spider Suit, which in the comics he gives him for Civil War. That's, you know, maybe part of his, like, trying to convince Spider-Man. And in Infinity War, sorry, in Civil War he does give him a new suit. 
because the old one was very yeah anyway and right here we have the yes the the large yeah relarging films for scenes for endgame before beginning work on her solo film captain marvel which was released first to introduce the character to audiences captain marvel directors anna bowden and ryan fleck were present for the filming of her scenes in endgame and gave Danvers' characterization in the film their blessing, which I add is excellent. And then I note, I do hope we find out why she didn't return to Earth until now. And, I mean, on some level, part of it is the... She is... She doesn't really feel that Earth deserves special protection from... That, that she owes Earth protecting it is is really part of the thing isn't it and i mean on some level i could i could understand i mean yes she was born on earth but she doesn't i mean her powers are not of earth and there are others who are you know who need her more because earth does have some defenders and a lot of earth is you know, ruled by democracy, democratic leaders. You know, there are a lot of places that are a lot worse off. But then, I mean, in, in yeah, when, when in the DCU, they said that about the, about Clark Kent, I was, I mean, I guess, yeah, the, the big thing is, in, in the DCU, it's not you owe more to these others, it's just you don't owe Earth anything. Which, considering they don't bring up an alternative, essentially it's, essentially it's the same as saying you don't owe anyone anything. And that really is, that's, that's a very... You, no one should think that they don't, you know, the, the, the idea that that you don't, that, that everyone else is, is not. Everybody had, has had some help from someone. Even if, like, even if the people of your time treat you like crap. I'm, I'm not saying necessarily forgive them for that, although definitely don't do anything to them for that. You know, I've said it many times before, violence is only ever okay if it prevents other violence that is the only not don't don't take revenge because someone treated you badly but if yeah you know let's say that everyone around you in your time treats you badly well the people who built the roads you know long ago the people who invented this or that vaccine which helped if not you your ancestors you know nobody is like I guess you could argue that Ego, the living planet from Guardians of the Galaxy, at least as he's, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, you could say that at least at first he, nobody helped him because he was all alone, but it's literally almost no one living can, can claim to have the same. At most, you, at most you'd say that you don't know the people who helped you or the individuals. Anyway, yeah, so I noted, I do hope we find out why she didn't return to Earth until now. If this movie is set shortly after Infinity War, that would place in the year 2018. Left in 95, where she'd been for 23 years. And, yeah, I've already gone into how it explains, but, yeah, then I suppose, did it take that long to find a suitable place for the refugees to resettle? I can't tell if that's an anti-immigration message or a pro-immigration message. On one hand, it says that it's a serious problem, so we should deal with it. So, you know, pro-immigration. But on the other hand, it says, you know, anti-immigration, be scared, we will always have to deal with these refugees. So, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Is the... Right, yeah, and it says here, Gwyneth Paltrow, it, this is her final major appearance as POTS in the MCU. So I'm glad that they did at least get to have her as rescue. And she did some really cool stuff. In, in the action, in, in the climax, but the, let's see, who 
right and that's actually everything that I had noted to specifically say I think I would like to just briefly skim the Wikipedia the plot uh, synopsis or whatever it's called to see if there's anything I want to comment on specifically that I didn't already maybe if there's something I misunderstood or something but yeah just briefly I yeah, I, I really, I've, I already said it in one of the earlier parts, but I really love how they've done, how, how they've dealt with, you know, Pepper and, and Tony and, and the whole, I am, I am incredibly happy that they, you know, in, in Civil War, we're told they broke up and I was just, that's like, if I had one thing about Civil War, I wish they just said that like we're taking time apart or she she said she needed you know we're we're taking a month apart she said she needed space something but just saying we're we're broken up that really i mean iron man 3 really has the the you know he he rescues her and the the whole thing. but then the just yeah, the the. But thankfully, with homecoming, they undid that, with Pepper being out in front, you know, having having done the, you know, she's in front of the press and she's like, well, "Where's Spider-Man? He's supposed to come out and be like the new Avenger." Were they gonna give away his identity there, or I mean, I guess maybe they were just gonna say, you know, here he is in the suit. But were they gonna say like meet the newest? That really, I mean, at tech, I guess technically, Black Panther's identity is a secret. But then Wakanda was a secret until the end of Black Panther. So maybe now people know his identity. If if so, literally the only secret identity for, for the heroes in the entire MCU is Spider Man, which is hilarious because a huge component of the Civil War storyline is that Spider-Man reveals his secret identity. That is a major plot element. So the the idea that he's now the only one who doesn't give his identity anyway. So the Wikipedia plot synopsis. I guess yeah, I'm not gonna read aloud. The I'm just I'm gonna try to real quickly skim and try not to have any dead air, which might mean that I talk slowly and not necessarily say much of interest. And I don't know which is worse, this or dead air. I like how they put this. Thor has become the drunken ruler of Asgard's refugees in Norway. Honestly, I don't know for sure. If I heard that there really is a place in Norway called New Asgard, I wouldn't really be surprised. And that's that's a compliment. I mean it as a compliment. Let's see. And whoever wrote this did a really good job of summing up because it's a three hour movie. There are a lot of like little plot elements and such. This, this does a really good job of just it's like, just it's, it's a highlight reel, you know, just you don't need every single little detail. Like for example, this says, you know, he about Stark designs a device to stabilize time travel. That's a really important plot point. That that's, but it doesn't go into you know when they try to test the time travel without the device. This is what happened because that's not really necessary. The important thing is that my back is starting to. Excuse me. 
I realize when I do that on camera, it's probably not a very flattering visual, but really, it's it helps and it's help that I need. So the let's see. Yeah, this is the thing that Loki manages to escape with the space stone. I may have already said in one or the other, but the the one of the earlier parts of this video. But did I? Yeah, just to just to say, I figure that the fix to that is that you know they they got bang got more time travel juice, and we you know there at the very end, Steve travels through time, puts the time stones back in the right place. The infinity stones back in the right place. Wow. And the, the, I figured that the thing is that he travels back to, yeah, I mean, he travels back to before the, the, let's see. I mean, basically, the, the, that series of time travels undoes the stuff of, of taking the, the stones and the other. Maybe he travels... Wait. Yeah, he probably... Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe if he arrives right after they left the last time, so there's not two of them running around, three of them, technically. I, I guess. But the Loki one... I mean, maybe he went back in time... And then, before, yeah, maybe he talks to, uh, wait, no, because they have to have done the travel the one time. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Anyway. Let's see. I like this. Thor encounters his mother Frigga, whose counsel restores his conviction. See, that's almost that. Like, if if the if Thor was asked, "What happened to you?" I encountered my mother Frigga, whose counsel restored my conviction. You know that I, I appreciate when you write in a way that the character himself talks. Let's see. And I do really like that they let him have Mjolnir, for, you know, one more time. And and the you know when when deciding, he's you know, he and Cap each get one, and he's like, no, you get the small one, you get the little one, something like that. And And this is the kind of, of sentence you get with, again, this is well written, I'm not mocking, I just, I just really like the, this is the kind of phrasing you get when you get this kind of time frame shenanigans. Thanos sends the past incarnation of Nebula to the present, in present day Nebula's place. See, I mean, that's, it's easy enough to follow, but it's, it's a real, yeah. Let's see. It's interesting, this keeps referring to, this, it keeps saying Banner instead of like Hulk or Professor Hulk, but I mean Banner is used to be the only brainy one, so yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, my back's really, I'm almost done with this. Anyway, okay, so. Me. 
yeah and this also instead of describing all the different people that try to use you know get the gauntlet away from from thanos instead it just says stark eventually retrieves and activates the infinity stones that yeah that's that's a good way to to put, yeah and you know now that i think about it yeah i mean it the movie establishes that you cannot bring someone back wait wait one second it's not a good idea to bring back someone, a, a person, out of their current time. But, I mean, at the end of the day, Gamora remains out. As far as I understand from the, the ending, yeah. And the, yeah, so the, the, let me think, the, the, right, the, which is why they can't just, you know, bring Tony back by maybe getting another version of him and, or something. You know, it's it's not a good idea to... Yeah. Now, following a funeral for Stark, Thor appoints Valkyrie Queen of Asgard and joins the Guardians of the Galaxy. From the Infinity Stones and Mjolnir to their original timelines, Rogers chooses to travel back and live his life in the past. With Carter, he appears as an elderly man, passes his shield on to Sam Wilson. I do also like, like in the in the comics, the serum made him not age. So when he appears, you know, as an old man, it's because the serum wore off. But in the movies, they never said that he doesn't age. It's the reason that he's around today and he was around in World War II was that he was frozen. It's not that he, yeah, so, so that was, I, I like the, that way of bringing it. I, I think the idea that the serum could prevent someone from aging, I'm sorry, I think that might be one step too far. The MCU is closer to reality than, than that. Similar, you know, in, in the comics, as far as I recall, the, the falcon can actually talk to birds and instead of a little, you know, drone, he has a pet falcon. And that's, you know, I, f I forget what it's called, but it has the same name in the comics as it doesn't, as the drone in the movie. Anyway, the, the, let's see. It's... Which is also, you know, you can tell from looking at the drone, it looks a little bit like a bird, you know. I... let's see... Did I already mention the part about how the, my friend that I watched the movie with said that he had expected Captain Marvel to be more of the movie, and I would say I was happy with how much she was, and I think he also said he was happy with it, he was just surprised that it was like that. Now, but that, that's the thing, you know, basically everyone, like the, the, basically everyone who time travels is someone we've seen, that we've spent more time with. There wouldn't be as much, you know, they wouldn't travel to a time that Captain Marvel has been to, you know, and, and really, I mean, the, the person, the, the characters that time travel that we know the least are Rocket and Nebula and... They were major characters in two movies, you know, go back and watch Guardians of the Galaxy 1, Nebula is in a lot of that movie, she, you know, and she does, you know, you remember her. Let's see, you know, and, and other than those two, it's the original Avengers from the first Avengers movie, and we've, yeah, I mean, is there a single one of them that hasn't had at least three movies, that hasn't been in at least three movies? I mean, even even Black Widow, she was in Iron Man 2 and Captain America 2, and then both the, the two first Avengers movies. You know, not, not everyone got, like, she, she didn't get three solo movies, like, you know, the, the main three. 
are they called Marvel's Trinity? I forget. Like the way that the DC Trinity is Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Anyway, yeah, the I, th I think it was a good way to handle that aspect, to, to really focus in on just the, the main Avengers team. And I, th I really think they did a good job of that, you know, excuse me, Infinity War wasn't really about the, excuse me, the main Avengers. It was about the people, the characters, excuse me, the characters who had the most to do with Thanos. You know, and, and Tony hasn't seen Thanos very much, but he's been obsessed with Thanos since 2012, since the, the you know, wormhole over New York. And yeah, Avengers 1, 2, and 4 are primarily about exploring the, the core Avengers team. And the first Avengers movie doesn't do it as deeply as the other two, but yeah, I, I still don't honestly know exactly why that is. You know, if, if Josh Whedon didn't think that he could pull that off or if he was told not to, because he did it so brilliantly with the second one. Maybe they did feel like, no, this needs to just be a big, you know, big summer blockbuster. We can't dwell too much on characters. And it's not as though there's no character. It's just maybe, yeah, it's, it's not as deep. But everybody has character moments that, you, you know, everyone in the, in the team, on the team. And Loki, of course, has, you know... And both, both Banner and Hulk does, even though Hulk doesn't have that much screen time, and most of his screen time is, is action scenes. Now, yeah, I guess that's... Yeah, let me just real briefly look. Yeah, there's the tomato meter, which I already went into some. And... I guess, yeah, and on and meta, the meta score as I record this appears to, yeah, when, when I opened this page, I don't know if there's been new reviews since then, is 78 out of 100, generally favorable reviews based on 46 critics, and 43 of them are positive, two are mixed, and one is negative, and yeah, you know, that doesn't... I th it's it's probably I haven't really looked to to find out for sure, but it's probably difficult to find a movie that's so good that no one has given it a negative review, you know that not one single publication has given it a negative review. I don't think of if it's that few negative reviews. You know, comparatively, I heard that I haven't read them, but I heard that Hellboy got incredibly bad reviews. So I I do still intend to watch that, but my wrists were worse than usual. And currently, it looks as though I'll just do that one when it comes out on, on DVD and at the library. So, you know, half a year. My library, my, my cinema doesn't show it in 3D anyway. You know, and what would be the... And, and if I watched it, like, let's see. Well, yeah, I mean, I have plans for what I'm going to video review over the next, over the coming weeks, you know, it, there was room for it the, the week before, yeah, last week, and my wrists were not up to it, and my back also had major problems, and I was also like, I might, my, my physical therapist had, you know, celebrated Easter, of course, so I couldn't get, as, you know, as my treatments, and I was like, if I can't get more treatments for my back and my wrists. I'm not gonna risk ruining the cinema going experience, and it wasn't, of, of Endgame with also watching Hellboy before it, you know. I, I, and I knew, you know, it's gonna be three hours. It's gonna be a full three hours for Endgame, and, you know, it's an MCU movie, so I'm gonna take a ton of notes. Yeah, I, I guess I'll end this video, this this part, the same way that I started the first one. I usually, I, I always bring two pads, and for the MCU movies, I 
always go past the first pad, but this is the first time ever that I've needed to use everything on both pads, and I I wrote stuff on the cardboard on the back. No, I'm not expecting you to be able to read it. I'm just, you know, maybe you can tell that I wrote on it, but you're not, you know. I, I, the things I wrote on these, I read aloud in earlier videos on this, but yeah, you know, every single paper, some, sometimes on the back of, you know, this side and this side of the paper, you know, yeah. I'm probably not going to bring more than two pads from now on still, but it's, it's, pretty out there that it's actually, yeah. Let's see, do I have anything especially brilliant to, to end this on? Let me quickly check. Yep. My cell phone is set to silent. I, I'm really excited to see where, where else they go, and I think this works as a conclusion to all the movies that came before it and you know that doesn't mean that they don't say you know we're getting another movie in the series for spider-man black panther doctor strange and guardians of the galaxy and other than those we don't know what they're you know what's what's coming up but i do think that i mean i could imagine something like I, I don't know if they would call it thor but if they if valkyrie got a trilogy of her own the way that thor got a trilogy of his own you know a trilogy where valkyrie is the protagonist not a supporting character and let's see a hmm then there was yeah, I definitely, I, I'm excited about, you know, I think there's, there's definitely interesting things that can happen in the aforementioned sequels, all of them. I think there's, there's stuff to build on from the movie or movies, the, you know, with, with, let's see, yeah, with Guardians of the Galaxy, it's two movies that came before, excuse me, I guess the other three, it's only the second one, that's it. but yeah. There's stuff to build on, and it's, yeah, let's see. For example, you know, Doctor Strange, I could imagine Baron Mordo shows up. I could imagine that Killmonger and or Andy Serkis' character will show up in Black Panther 2, or possibly someone entirely different. Let's see, you could have... Hmm. Yeah, I guess that's about what I have for that. But yeah, you know, if, if the ending, if the last time we see the Guardians of the Galaxy in this movie is any indication, then Guardians of the Galaxy 3 will be about them trying to find Gamora and Thor will now be on the team. And I, th I think I said in an earlier part, this is what happens when I record several videos about the same thing over the course of more than one day and with breaks between recording. I, for, I start to forget what I said in earlier parts. Anyway, I guess it's happened outside of, of that circumstance. But anyway, the point I'm trying to get at is the last thing we get in the first Guardians of the Galaxy is Quill being told he's not Terran. And the the... You know, and, and Yondu says, you know, it's, it's a good thing we didn't, you know, yeah, Cracklin says it's a good thing we didn't give Quill to his dad like we were ordered to. Yeah, that guy was a real a-hole. And then the second movie is, yeah, you know, you're, you're part human, but the other part is, you know, something something more powerful. And the second movie is about Quill's father, who is something more powerful than human. And the ending of Guardians of the Galaxy 2, well, I mean, it, it has several different things. But among them are the, the thing of, you know, the, yeah, the, the, 
Gamora and Nebula really becoming like sisters and Nebula, you know, Gamora appealing to her by saying, you know, there are a lot of other little girls out there that could use help. And she says, I'll help them by killing Thanos, which to be fair, I mean, if they don't kill, if they don't stop Thanos and he gets all Infinity Stones, you're, you're only going to be able to save half of those scared little girls, Gamora. So really, I mean, it's, it's a nice sentiment. It's like, you know, the, the scene is supposed to make us be like, oh man, Gamora, you know, Nebula is so, so angry. And so, I mean, when we're watching that scene the first time, we're not really thinking so much about, we're, we're thinking about the movie itself where in Thanos did not play a role. But then the next time we see Gamora and Nebula, they're literally trying to stop Thanos from getting the Infinity Stone for the gauntlet. So yeah. Anyway, the the yeah. So the 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 thing is the yeah, you know, she says I'll I'll stop I'll kill Thanos to help those girls. And she tries to kill Thanos in you know, Infinity War and Endgame. And let's see, there was, was there other stuff at the end of Guardians 2 that was followed up on? Yeah, him, the Groot becoming a teenager. And the, the you know, the, the abridged script, it's, instead of I am Groot, it says I am rude, which is a great, yeah. And he's a teenager throughout Infinity War and Endgame. And, oh, and by the way, if you didn't cry at all from Endgame, you might already have heard this, but in case you didn't, apparently when Groot was being dusted at the end of Infinity War, and he said, I am Groot, to Rocket, apparently, according to, like, was it James Gunn himself? I forget. That translated to daddy or, or dad or father, some, something like that, you know. So, yeah, you know, the teenage group sees Rocket as his father, and he's, you know, yeah. So, there's, there's that shot right in the fields. And what was the other? I mean, there's, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff at the end of Avengers, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And a lot of it isn't, hasn't yet been followed up on. And that's, I mean, the, the thing with, with Stallone and his team, I mean, maybe they'll be major players in Guardians 3, or maybe they'll just be, as far as I understand, those are the actual original team, and it's possible we don't, it's possible we won't see them ever again, of course. But, yeah, I mean, maybe they could make a, another Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy and focus on them instead. I mean, if... I, I don't know, it's been, I haven't seen Stallone very much recently, but, I mean, let's see, when was the last time I saw him in something fairly, well, I mean, I would say he doesn't have a lot of lines in Guardians 2, but he does a great job of acting in it, you know, yeah, I, I'm not, I forget what, I, I think maybe Rambo 4, which I realize is now, was that 10 years ago, more? You know, I, I do think that that one, I think he does some great acting in that as well. I guess maybe, hmm, am I maybe thinking of one of the Expendables movies? He does great acting in at least one of those, possibly, I, I forget. Let's see, what was the, the idea with the, yeah, let me just go through the other things at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy to, yeah, this Quill gets a zoom, and we have some of his music in Infinity War. We only hear the one song, but yeah. Let's see. I, I like that in this, they didn't feel like they had to do that again. They just, they showed the part from the start of the first movie where he's dancing and singing along, and then they cut to the perspective of someone not the, with the headphones on, and he just looks like an idiot. You know, but the yeah. Let's see. There's the there's Kraglin trying to use the arrow and not succeeding. That doesn't. Yeah. Let's see. There's Stan Lee is actually a watcher, or at least communicates with watchers. Hmm. I I think that might be all of the. 
the post credit scenes of that movie. I do hope that the third one shows a little bit more restraint, but yeah, anyway. I still do think that it's a great movie, it's just sometimes it's a lot. It's a whole, whole lot. You know, it's it's one of those things where like the the first one was such a breakout hit. Like the MCU has had tons of hits, but no one expected like people were were like talking about how Guardians might be the first flop of the MCU. You know, they hadn't had a flop before then, but now they're you know they have this incredibly risky one, and yeah, you know, a lot of people were like this. It's not going to work. The, this is going to be the, the big failure, and everybody loved it. And I, I do really, really love the first one, and I love a lot about the second one. I, I feel like every time I watch the second one, I appreciate it at least a little more, and it helps to watch Lindsay Ellis's video, The Complicated Feels of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. But yeah, I, the first time, I was, it, was, it was a lot. And it's a lot from the very start. Like, when when Groot dances for like two whole minutes instead of like, I don't know, 20 seconds maybe, you know. Yeah, at the end of the first one he dances very, very briefly. And then at the start of the second one he dances for maybe two minutes straight. And it, I mean, it's while an action scene is happening in the background and an action scene involving characters that we really care if they live or die. So, you know, it's subversive and it's clever, but it's, it's, it's a lot. I guess that is everything I, I mean, I'll, I'll just briefly say I can't wait to watch Spider-Man Far From Home. The fact that they're finally giving, they're finally putting Mysterio in a movie, I can't. I've wanted that for... 15 years? Yeah, 15 years. Yeah, I, I can't, I cannot wait. I, I, yeah. And Black Panther 2, the first one is such a masterpiece. And if anyone can make another masterpiece with a similar, you know, with the same characters and such, it's definitely the, the writers and, and director of the, the first one. I think I think it would be super cool if Shuri, at least for a little while, was the Black Panther. Just throwing that out there. Happened in the comics. Let's see. The Then there's... Yeah, I've already talked Doctor Strange. I think it would be really cool. Like, the first Thor movie, like the first Doctor Strange movie, it's setting, it's, it's a lot, it's a mouthful for the casual movie fan to, to take in. So they don't, they try not to overwhelm you. And then Thor 2 goes, just dives in, you know, and I hope Doctor Strange 2 will do that. Just completely, like, dive into to this world that we, you know, the Ancient One says, you know, you've been looking through, like, a, a keyhole and we're about to widen that keyhole. You know, and yeah, for for the the second one, for the for it to be from a keyhole to a barn door, I, I believe they can handle that with, without it being overwhelming. You know, now that we've yeah, and some of the, you know the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie also dives deep. You know, if that movie had come out before the first Thor, I don't think I think it would have been too soon. I don't think people would have been completely ready for something quite that out there. At least maybe not from Marvel. Maybe if it was like and James Gunn wasn't a name before not not in like mainstream, as far as I understand, before the the first Guardians. Am I am I putting off ending the video or am I just am I trying to think of if there's any any last stuff? Right, yeah, just just briefly. I started to say I like that this is an ending, and I is is it maybe that they're not there's not another Avengers movie on the way, and yeah, we don't know about other movies from the MCU in the MCU 
from Marvel Studios, other than the the what was it three or four sequels there, and yeah, I mean I guess it's not impossible that they will just straight up take a couple of years and be like when you next time when we when we put out the next movie. We have access to the X-Men and the Fantastic Four, so you know it's going to be worth the wait. I don't know. You know, it, today it is kind of like, you know, studios like to just keep pushing stuff out there, have, have a new movie out in theaters as quickly as, as possible after the last one so that you can make more money and, you know, and obviously eventually people get tired of... Yeah, I, I don't know. But, I, I mean, I'll wait... You know, I'll wait if, if they do take a break or the like. One thing I could definitely, I could definitely imagine, they might go back down to just one movie per year. I think that would be, that's, yeah. I mean, the them doing not just one, but two, and sometimes three movies in a single year. You know, that was, that was a good, like, just kind of like, what's it called? When you, when you in, increase intensity and then it explodes in this movie and I, I know technically this is not the this is a year where three movies are released by Marvel Studios but this is not the third one the third one this year will be Spider-Man Far From Home but yeah you know that movie this movie was an explosion that had been built to for, for all these years and I, I totally understand if they slow down. Maybe maybe not even one per year. Maybe only every two years or something. I could totally understand that. And yeah, yeah. Let me just briefly uh, the the thing. I can't believe I didn't I didn't already forget. My my memory is not that bad yet. Give me a minute. I, I know it was it was right on the tip of my tongue. And it wasn't acid, so I didn't need to spit it out. I can't believe I actually... I didn't... I, no. I didn't actually forget until I... Until I stopped remembering what I might have forgotten. The... The... Let's see. Right. One thing... I mean, the the all the praise... For, for this movie, some of it isn't even fair to other movies. It's not, it's not fair to other movies to say that this is a million times better than other movies because other movies don't have ten years to draw from, you know. And some of these things, I mean, it's so incredibly well executed. Some of these things, Kevin Feige might have been thinking, wouldn't it be cool to have more scenes set around the time of the climax of, of the first Avengers movie, but, like, not you know, and, and put them in a later movie and have characters time travel to do that. I could imagine that he's been thinking of that. And it's also possible that something like the Hulk and hating the, excuse me, hating the stairs, that could have, it's possible that, that was like Joss Whedon did that and there just wasn't, you know, they, they felt like, no, we, the, the bad guy's been caught, we need to end the movie, and, and so they cut that. I forget, did they actually put out, like, DVDs of the the full version of the first two Avengers movies because certainly for the second one but I hear also for the first one Joss Whedon's he he made a longer movie and they cut it down a anyway yeah you know some some of the stuff in this movie you feel like they've been they've been building to that for for like you know and I mean something like you know Pepper at Tony's funeral yeah, I can imagine they've been they've been planning to do that since they made the first Iron Man movie. You know, in that movie, there are a couple of times, you know, when when he comes back, she's like, you know, like his what is it he says her eyes are red and, and you know, obviously she's she's cried because she thought he was dead. You know, and then later in the movie, she's she threatens to leave if he is going to keep throwing himself at the the Iron Man mission thing, you know, and and she even says you're gonna get yourself killed or some something close to that, you know. So the idea of Pepper mourning 
you know, and and then, then the second one, you know, he's trying to break the news to her that he's gonna die soon, and then, you know, he accidentally, you know, he doesn't know that she can listen in when when he's talking to Black Widow, so she hears it and she's really anxious about him not telling her, and yeah. So so some of this they've probably been building up to for years, and I yeah, technically it's not fair to other movies to say, oh, but, you know, this movie did did this because they did, but then at the same time, they could have fumbled. They could have been like, oh, no, we're not going to get to keep making enough movies. We don't have enough movies to put all this stuff in. we got to put some, which is what the DCU, you know, that's the DCU. <sighs> not anymore, it looks like. But the, the, yeah, I think the Justice League movie, was maybe the last time they did that because I don't know. I mean, some people say that Aquaman is overstuffed. I disagree. I don't. I don't think that the Aquaman, the movie, is made the way it is because they were worried that they wouldn't have that they wouldn't get more movies, and so they kept cramming stuff in. I, that that wasn't the feel I got from it. I felt like it was just the is it James James Wan. I want to say the director loves the material, and he was like. This is so awesome. Let's let's not do what Thor 1 did. Let's do what Guardians of the Galaxy 1 did. Let's just, you know, take a deep dive directly into this material. Because it's so... I mean, I get that not everybody loves it. But you got to admit, there's some concepts in there that you wouldn't necessarily have thought of as being in... Like, there's so much comic book goodness in there the the squid is that what, yeah playing the drums to keep people hyped during the the duel that will determine who will be the king and there's like this you know like like lava bit down that they might be pushed into and just yeah anyway and you know the first wonder woman movie isn't really overstuffed. I don't think that, I mean, Shazam, you could definitely make an argument that it's overstuffed, but I don't think that's because they thought they weren't getting another movie. I think that's, yeah, they, they felt that this was all good stuff. They wanted it all in there, not that they were worried, but, you know, the fact that Justice League would, was pushed out, you know, they didn't even have... Batman technically didn't even get a solo movie, although some would argue that Batman v Superman is Batman's movie and Superman guest stars, but, you know, they only had one solo movie and then a, a team-up movie, and then they do the big team-up movie. I mean, look, you don't have to be as be like the MCU in every way, but again, it does bear repeating. By the time they made the first Avengers movie... The MCU had put out Iron Man 1, The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, and Captain America. Five movies. Every single major... Like, literally, the only... Everyone had gotten their own solo movie leading up to it, except... I mean, yeah, this is the three. Nick Fury, uh, Black Widow, and... I don't know called Scarlett Johansson, which is... Anyway, and Hawkeye. And technically all of them had had, you know, they were side characters in other movies, although Hawkeye was only a very brief cameo. But everyone, like literally, when you look at it, there's literally not a single character, sorry, there's only one single character in the entire, this is named character. Two, no, one. Even even Jasper Sitwell, he was in Thor, you know. The only character in the Avengers that's like named, that didn't appear in any of the MCU movies leading up to it, the only one is the what what's her name Maria, something. I'm sorry, I, yeah, the the female, you know, the the Shield agent. She's literally the only character, the only major character. I mean, I guess if you... No. 
I, I do not accept neither neither the other nor Thanos as major characters. They're not major characters. They don't have very much screen time at all. Thanos is a cameo, you know. The the other is an important character, but he is a side character. He basically, you know, at the start of the movie, he tells Thanos and the audience what Loki is going to try to do. And at the end, yeah, around the middle, he tells Loki, you know, get a move on, keep keep going, we, you know. And then at the end, he tells Thanos that Earth is stronger than they thought. But yeah, so the only major character who didn't get an introduction in another movie is literally the, yeah. Meanwhile, the DCEU just blurts out, you know. I mean, Aquaman, I get why he's some people's favorite Justice League character. But if he's not your favorite, you might blink and miss him a lot of the time. He just stands in the background. He barely interacts with the other characters. And I mean, at least with at least Wonder Woman has you know scenes with Batman that don't involve the rest of the team. Not many, but yeah. And you know, let's see. And you know, the the what's it, the, the Flash has has a lot of lines. But but yeah, you know, there's a anyway. Let's see. Is there anything at all left? I guess I'll just, it just. I thought this was a brilliant way to to cap off. You know, what is it? Twenty. It's the twenty second movie, if I recall, or is it twenty third? Anyway, in ten years, eleven years. It's it's amazing. I I really I I love the entire MCU. Not all of them equally, and I feel like this movie loves it too. This movie is a huge love letter to... Like, if you didn't know that it was made by some of the same people that made the others, you know, the Russo brothers, you know, two Captain America movies and two Avengers movies, if you didn't know that, you might think that this was, like, a super expensive fan movie, you know. I mean, some of the Star Trek fan movies do get, like, Tim Russ and, yeah, other actors from, from Star Trek. But but yeah the the it's it's uh, it felt like they wanted to celebrate all that had come before and with with this movie and I feel like they succeeded without it being like yeah I mean it's it's so rare that like for TV shows, the, the the series finale is rarely particularly good. And yeah, you could look at this as a sort of series finale. It, I think it makes sense to compare it to series finales. And as such, it's one of the very, very few finales that I think not, you know, it's, it's one of the very few that aren't bad, and it's one of the almost none that are actually amazing so yeah and with that i will end this so i hope you enjoyed watching as i enjoyed watching and recording and i will catch you next time